The people who have walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born to us, a son is given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time on and forevermore, Come, let us worship him. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Friends in Christ, I am so delighted and thankful that leading us in worship tonight is also our the presiding bishop of the ELCA, Bishop Elizabeth Eaton. She's leading us in prayer and offered this gift for a special for our worship, and I thank her for that. Let us join with her in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence, and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare in room. And heaven and nature The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David.
Joseph went to Bethlehem to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly the shepherds saw that with the angel there was a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom God favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When the shepherds saw Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Since I've just moved back to Ohio, I've been remembering things. I've never really been a pastor in Ohio before, but I did do my hospital chaplaincy here in this state when I was in seminary. It was at a children's hospital. Later, you can guess which one. There were a lot of great things about that place, but right now I'm thinking of one detail in particular. They had this policy which was supposed to apply to anyone who worked there, including student chaplains. It was very simple. If somebody asked you for directions, and if you were not in the middle of something urgent, then instead of just giving them directions, you were supposed to stop what you were doing and go with them where they needed to go. Now, I don't know how often that actually happened, but it sounds to me like a lovely policy. Think about it, you're at the hospital. Everything is very confusing. Something has probably gone very badly wrong already or you wouldn't even be here. So what would you rather hear? Well, follow the green signs to the second set of elevators and then go to the third floor and take the right-hand hallway and ask at the second nurse's station, which is on the left. I don't know about you, but I would be lost at the first set of elevators. Or would you rather if someone just said to you, come with me, I'll show you the way. On a good day, I love going for a hike and finding my own way using a nice trail map. Maps are great. Directions are really helpful. But when I'm tired, frustrated, confused, angry, scared, I would much rather someone just show me the way. But it's got to be somebody who actually knows the way, somebody reliable, someone I can trust. But who do you trust? These days, everyone and their cousin is offering a different set of directions. Follow this path and you'll get rich. Use this method and you'll be successful. Vote this way and defeat your enemies. 
Stick to this plan, you can't lose. Send me money and you are guaranteed to be blessed. It's easy to think that faith is like having a map. It's basically a set of boundaries. You use it to keep you on course for eternity. So maybe the Bible is like the directions. If you don't make any wrong turns, you'll make it to heaven. But if that's the case, then we are still stuck with the same old problem. Which set of directions are right? Which way of the road is the road really going? Who gets to decide? And besides, we are too tired and frustrated and confused and angry and scared to be any good at following directions. Isn't there someone who can just show us the way? Isn't there someone who can just go with us wherever we need to go? And that's when God sends Jesus, when we need someone to show us the way. That's why God sends Jesus, because we need someone to show us the way. That's who God sends Jesus to, to people who need to be shown the way. The someone who shows us the way is Jesus. Jesus, the word who became flesh and lived among us. Jesus, the baby born in Bethlehem who walked the dusty roads of Galilee and Judea until his death on a hill outside Jerusalem. Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus is not a map that you follow or a set of directions to get you on the right road. If God had wanted to send us a map, God have, could have done that with a lot less fuss. Why would you send a baby to give directions? Babies are not known for being good at giving people directions. But babies are the way people start. And God sent a person, a human person like us. And because Jesus is human like us, he knows his way around. There's no place you can go in a human life from birth all the way to death where he can't be beside you. He knows the way. He's been there before. And yet he's also fully God. The word made flesh. God made flesh. And so Jesus is totally reliable. He'll never lead you astray. He'll never leave you behind. He can and he will go with you whatever you are going. Nothing is more important to him. You can't lose him by making a wrong turn because he won't lose you. You can't forget the directions because every direction leads to him. You can't go the wrong way with Jesus because Jesus is the way. So a life of faith it's not about following Jesus to get where he's going or to get to where we want to go. A life of faith is about being with Jesus now. A life of faith is about being with Jesus whenever and wherever and forever. And there is no time when that is more obvious than at Christmas time. Christmas, we know, isn't really about the right greeting. It's not really about giving the right presents. It's not really about spending the perfect amount of time with your family. It's not really about doing the right religious stuff. It isn't even really about the cute little baby in the manger. Christmas is about Emmanuel, God with us. Christmas is about God saying to us, when we are tired, frustrated, confused, angry, scared, alone, here, let me come with you. I'll show you the way. That's more than just a nice policy that some people might occasionally follow. It's a promise. And God always keeps God's promises. So it's always in Jesus' name that all God's people say, Amen. And Merry Christmas. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to
joining our voices with the song of the angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. The shepherds sing, Jesus Christ is born. Let your church throughout the world proclaim this good news over the hills and everywhere. Unite the voices of your faithful people in songs of praise. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Heaven and nature sing joy to the world. Give respite to flocks, fields, and those who tend them. Come near to us in the beauty of night, the shining of the stars, and the hush of the world at rest. May our wonder at your creation rouse our care for all the earth. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. The angels sing, peace on earth. Come quickly to still the strife of the world. Hush the noise of war and violence. Inspire leaders of nations to seek lasting peace and sustainable provision for all. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Mary sings melodies of comfort to her child. Bring rest to those facing struggles tonight. Shelter travelers and those without homes. Console those who lie awake due to pain or anxiety. Heal those who are sick or hurting. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Love sings through the sound of a new baby's cry. Bless new parents and expectant parents. Comfort those who long for children, especially those running out of hope. Surround families of every shape and size with your love and care. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. The heavenly chorus sings, glory to God in the highest. We give you thanks for all the saints who have proclaimed your glory. Let us join with them this night in joyful praise around your eternal throne. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all our prayers to you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let us join together with Christians across Northeast Ohio and the world as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Almighty God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, proclaimed joy through the angels, sent the shepherds with good news, and led the Magi by a star, bless you this day through the word made flesh. Amen. Go in peace. Share the gift of Jesus. Thanks be to God. And Merry Christmas.